Hi ladies, it's Trevor, your fitness coach, and I wanted to just take the time to go over something that I I'm pretty sure that most of you don't understand. So if you do get this, you can skip over it, but it really is good information. Um, and the subject matter is anaerobic fitness, um, which has to do with the sprint training program that I made for you. Um, so we're gonna start by trying to just describe the anaerobic um, fitness through aerobic versus anaerobic. So we're gonna start there. Um, and let me just use sort of a, a line of intensity, I guess you'd say. So on this side of the line, um, we're gonna call that your resting heart rate. So that is your heart rate when you're not doing anything. So you just wake up in the morning and you take your heart rate without moving at all. And it is, we're gonna say 60 to 70 beats per minute just for an example, because that's probably common. Beats per minute is 60 to 70, sorry for the messy writing. Um, and then on this side of the spectrum, you have your maximum heart rate. We'll just say maximum heart rate here. Oops. And what we have then is the least amount of beats per minute that you have versus the most that your heart will beat. And they say that your maximum heart rate is, just, just for quick math and a quick reference guide, it's not the best way to do it, it's 220 minus your age. And that's going to equal this number. So if we say that your maximum heart rate is 220 minus, and you guys are maybe 30 years old because I'm not very good at math, um, we can say that it's 190 beats per minute then, for your example, okay? And you can do your own math. Somewhere in between here, we're going to have a transition between aerobic and aerobic. So I'm going to draw a line to indicate that right now, and then I'll describe it more, okay? But on this side of the line, you have your aerobic fitness, okay? So we're gonna say this over here is aerobic. Okay, on this side of the line, obviously that leaves your anaerobic fitness. So this is anaerobic. Okay? So far, so good. So what I'm trying to do is just sort of understand the range of heart rate that we're at. So when you are aerobic, just to kind of describe the two areas that you could be in, when you are aerobic, that means that you're using oxygen. The word aerobic means with oxygen. So I'm just gonna put this just real small here, with oxygen. And that means, of course, anaerobic means without, without oxygen, okay? So that makes it much easier to define this line in the middle. This is why. There is a heart rate area or a specific number that you could define this with, supposedly. But that's if we use the Carvonin formula instead of this. And I'd really rather have you understand the concept. But if you wanted to do numbers and you're a numbers person, you would take your maximum heart rate and multiply it times, we're going to do this, 85% of what this number is. So 85% of 190 in this case, okay? But a better way to do it in my opinion is to say, if this is aerobic and I am aerobic on anything on this side of the line, I'm aerobic, and that means that I have enough oxygen to supply my body for the activity that I'm doing, you will not be out of breath on this side of the line, okay? On this side of the line, then you are out of breath. Easy test to do. You start with uh, an elliptical and you put it on level five, for example, and you start to go and you give it two minutes and then you go up a little bit, like a level one or two more than that. So you're now you're on level six or seven. And then you take your heart rate if you need to, or they usually have it on your handles, that type of thing. But if you're not out of breath yet, you're gonna wait another two minutes go up another level. Wait another two minutes, go up another level. At some point in time, you're going to say to yourself, you know what, I, I can't quite catch my breath. And that's likely to be where your anaerobic threshold, that's what this is called, is. And at that point, you could take your heart rate and we're hoping that it would be 85% of 190 beats per minute in our example. So now that we can kind of define the aerobic zone, and now we've defined the anaerobic zone as well, because now you know you're out of breath over here, you know where your threshold level is, and if you take your heart rate, you know which side of the line you're on, or if you're out of breath, you know you're anaerobic, and if you have enough breath to do it, 
your aerobic. So now we know where we're at with all of these things. Now it's time to kind of understand it a little bit more. Aerobic training, for example. If you're using aerobic training, um, it would be, and we just defined what it is. You have enough breath to do it and, and you can do sort of a long, slow distance program. So those of you who are doing uh, long runs and, and it's not so hard that you're doing, uh, you know, you're out of breath the whole time and you're running say five miles, which is a long ways, but or maybe, maybe five miles isn't for you and 10 miles seems fine. And you decide that you're going to do all aerobic training instead of doing anaerobic training because you're good at it or because you think that it's the same thing. I have news for you, it is not. So one of the issues that you have with doing all aerobic training is that your sport is not aerobic all the time. There are times during your sport that is anaerobic. Um, and so you're not going to get better in that category, but maybe a little better way to describe it would be to say, if my anaerobic threshold right now is, let's just put a number to it and say that it is 150 beats per minute. Let's say right now that's what you're at and that's your 85% or whatever when you get out of breath. Wouldn't it be nice then, it means on the aerobic side at 150 beats per minute or more, you are now anaerobic, which is more difficult obviously and here's, here's why. You don't have enough oxygen and so your fuel source changes. So I'm going to go back just a notch and then we'll come back to this uh, again. Aerobically, you're using primarily fat for fuel. You will use some blood sugar as well, but in anaerobic zone, you, you're not allowed to use fat for fuel at all. Your body's not capable of doing that, so it can only use blood sugar. That's the only fuel that it can use, and guess what? You have a limited supply of blood sugar, and then you pass out. So those of you who have hit the wall while you're playing footy, guess what happened? Your blood sugar dropped to a point where you couldn't be anaerobic anymore and you had to stay aerobic. That means you couldn't run any faster than 150 beats per minute in your, your heart rate. Okay? What if, I'm going to go back to where I was before, what if your anaerobic threshold could move to 160? Wouldn't that be nice? The only way to make your anaerobic threshold move upward is to train in the anaerobic zone. Because in the anaerobic zone, you're teaching your body to work with blood sugar for fuel. You're also challenging yourself, think about it now, 60 to 70 beats per minute up to 150 beats per minute we're going to call it and then all the way up to let's say you're somewhere in here when you're doing your sprint training maybe you're 170 beats per minute you're burning more fuel obviously that's the easy one but you're expending a lot more energy than you would over here a lot more energy at once and it's more difficult for your body to try to keep up with it so your body gets be better at it you can relate this to uh, when you're lifting weights, for example, and you're doing a bench press, simple movement, and if you want to get better at a bench press, you wouldn't do the same weight every single time. Somehow you have to challenge yourself, so you would go up in weight, or maybe you would do more repetitions. In order to challenge your anaerobic zone and to improve upon it, you have to improve your heart and your lungs and your capacity for mitochondria to increase and the amount of blood vessels I hope I'm not losing you, but the fact of the matter is, in order to move this upward, you need to challenge yourself. And the challenge comes from the sprint training that I created for you, and it is slowly and surely moving you up in difficulty through volume, but it also has sort of an ebb and flow factor to it. You will notice that there are some weeks that are just a little bit less, but that it slowly is creeping up in, in the amount of volume for the most part, and sometimes in the amount of intensity. So. Um, I want you guys to always be challenging yourself and that leads me into, let's, let's go into, let's say you are, are doing the sprints, let's say I actually say that you're doing the sprints that you're supposed to be doing, but you are at 151 beats per minute because you're not really running very fast, but you are doing the sprint training program. That's like saying, well I did do the bench press and I did go up, but I only went up by two and a half pounds on each side of the bar this week and I don't think I'm going to go up again for the next month. That's not really challenging yourself as much as you could. I don't want you to pass out doing the sprints. And remember we said um, that it's supposed to be around 85% um, intensity level, but really the harder you push yourself in this direction without passing out obviously, the more likely it is that you're going to increase your anaerobic threshold. 
And there's some very big benefits to that. And here's why. If you guys increase your anaerobic threshold, that means now, let's say your new anaerobic threshold, because you're working really hard, is 170 beats per minute. That means everything under 170 beats per minute is still aerobic which is much easier on your body and you can last longer. Therefore, you have more endurance overall. So not only have you increased your ability to stay anaerobic, be anaerobic, and train in that anaerobic zone, but you've also increased the, the likelihood that you'll be aerobic longer. And that means that you can last longer because you also can use your fat for fuel. So now you have two sources of fuel. I think if you can understand all how, I know this is a lot, but if you can understand how all of this comes together, you can start to understand why it's so important for you to be doing the sprint training program. I am doing the sprint training program as often as I can, and I am now at, I don't know what level we're on, but I'm at um, nine sprints of 100 meters, three times, um, three circuits of it. And it is a lot. It's a lot of volume, it's a lot of intensity, but I never feel like um, it's too much because I've actually been doing the program as it's written throughout. Um, and so I, I obviously I'm, I'm reinforcing um, doing the sprinting program and it's going to make you better in this sport. But really what it comes down to you guys is who wants to go into this game that you're playing and be anaerobic right away? Lose your gas, run out of gas. This is what happened. I mean, this is what Barnsey said out loud after the game last year is that, you know what, you guys all ran out of gas. Here you are in the anaerobic zone too much, too soon, and all we have to do to do that is train in the anaerobic zone, increase your anaerobic threshold so you can stay aerobic longer. And that's all I'm, I think, that, I think that's as far as I'm going to go with it today. I'm sure you'll have lots of questions for me. Make sure that you send them to me um, via email. It would be better if there are longer questions. Text messages are good too. And all of my information is um, on the emails that I just sent out. Good luck.